What's going on, everybody? Dogman Dan here. We are in Warframe. Update 19.2 is out. Some pretty big things to talk about here in this overview video, if you will. So let's get things started. Now, as is always, I'd like to just kind of give you the info. Uh, day 1 access members. These are basically, just for anyone that's wondering, people that are part of the fan channel program, that are part of the media outlets, that type of stuff. Day 1 access members have received the new mods that are in-game. Uh, all 10 of them that now are in-game, and we're going to just go and quickly talk about each of these. I'm not going to leave you in the dark. I'm going to tell you where the all drops. Okay, so there are 10 new mods in here. Six are melee, four are syndicate mods for frames. Let's get busy on that, and then we'll get into the rest of this update. A lot of good things actually coming from this update. So as you can see them, here are all of the new mods. Okay, first off, so Rhino has a new mod, an augment mod. Obviously the augment mods, uh, syndicate augment mods, pick up in the syndicates. Uh, reinforcing Stomp, let's go ahead and take a look at the maximum on this here. So Rhino, Stomp, Augment, uh, Iron Skin Health is replenished by 80 for each enemy affected. Pretty good, I think. Not too bad. I mean, the health is... is oh, shut up, Ordis. Uh, a replenish of 80 is not too bad, I think, uh, when it comes to Rhino. I'm not sure. I haven't run Rhino in forever. Uh, save your decoy for Loki. Let's max that up just so you can see it. So, uh, if Loki takes fatal damage, decoy absorbs the damage and swaps locations. Also increases casting speed of decoy by 50%. Wow. If I ever had another utility slot available <laughs> on my Loki, now I'm going to have to potentially change things around just to try this one out because that is pretty interesting. Not sure how often I use it, but it overall is pretty interesting. I kind of like the way that that is set up. Okay. Corroding Barrage. We've got a Hydroid mod. Okay, let's go ahead and max that up there for a second. So, Tempest Barrage. Uh, each projectile has a 100% chance of inflicting a corrosive status proc. Whoa. That's pretty awesome. I like what they did there. Um, let me know. I mean, if you guys main Hydroid... That seems like a pretty good mod. 100% status chance of corrosive. 100% chance to inflict corrosive. That seems like a pretty good mod to me. Uh, Icy Avalanche for Frost. Max that bad boy right up there. So grants allies within the radius a coat of ice that absorbs 60 damage per enemy hit. I'm not sure. I mean, that's a definite team-based. I like that. I mean, that makes him feel a little bit more team-based. I don't know, honestly, if I would give up my stuff to add that. But it's worth a try. I mean, you're helping out your, your friends. They need your fellow Tenno, especially on certain types of missions. It may actually be very useful uh, on certain types of missions. So there is that. Okay. Now, let's get into these actual mods themselves. I'll start over here with Dispatch Overdrive. Okay, Dispatch Overdrive. Let's max that up just so you can see it. So, on a melee channel kill, 60% movement speed for 15 seconds. You can actually pick this up uh, by Corrupted Butchers. Okay, so if you look for Corrupted Butchers, you can get it through the Corrupted Butcher. Of course, these are all transmutable, all the melee mods, just FYI. Uh, so, a plus 60% movement speed for 15 seconds, dispatch overdrive. I could see some points to that, but I don't know, honestly, if I would use it very often. I mean, it's, it's, it's not bad in some respects, depending upon what you're trying to set up, but I don't know that I would use it often, to be honest, for me, my style. Uh, let's go healing return. Okay, we'll max this bad boy all the way up to a rank 16. It's going to take 30,000 endo. 
because it's a rare mod. This is going to give a plus 11 healed when hitting a target affected by status. Status mods, uh, status weapons are going to be the thing with all these new uh, new mods. A plus 11 healed when hitting a target affected by status. That's pretty good, I would think. We're going to have to try that out. Now, this is picked up as a rare mod by picking it through the crawlers. So, if you manage to get this rare mod off the crawler, there you go. It is also transmutable. Like I said, all of these melees will be transmutable. But to max this bad boy up is 30,000 endo. Just FYI. Alright. Uh, condition overload. Here we go. Let's max this boy up. He's not too bad in a max up for the rare mod. Uh, looks like a plus 60% melee damage for each status type affecting the target. Whoa. That has some use. I have some ideas. And look, it only costs less than 1000 for fusing. That's not bad at all. Uh, condition overload will drop by the Jakar Butchers. Or is transmutable. So, uh, good luck and uh, get busy on killing those Drakkar Butchers. This looks like a nice mod to play around with. I think depending upon, uh, again, status weapons. Status is taking over crit in this particular update, if you will. I'm a status guy anyway. I prefer status over critical personally. But I do love playing critical, especially on some weapons. Okay, let's go to Relentless Combination here. Let's take a look here at this. Uh, doesn't take much to build it up. And what this does is a 100% combo chance when slash status deals damage. So you got a 100% chance to do your combos. Okay. Relentless combination. So the more slash status damage, the more combos that you can hit off all the time. I can see that working on some with some stances. Some stances having the additional combos that have greater damage uh, capabilities, um, numbers, stats, whatever you want to call it, based off of their higher level combos that they do. So it may not be a, ma a bad mod at all to play around with. Uh, and and at just a regular common, it's not uh, too horrible. Uh, this is going to drop by Ancient Disruptors by Tar Mutilus Mowers and is also transmutable. Just as FYI. Okay, Guardian Derision. Let's go ahead and rank that bad boy up. This is going to take a bit. Not too bad. Blocking taunts enemies within 15 meters to target you instead of allies. So now you can taunt your enemies uh, to protect your allies. This is picked up by the Prod Crewman. Of course, it's transmutable. Uh, so that is actually not a bad thing. I mean, if you say you're running a tanky frame and you want to take in the damage, you want to taunt the enemies, if you, I mean, that's kind of the role of a tank, right? This could actually work out pretty well because now you're going to be able to taunt those enemies and take on that tank role uh, and bring the enemies towards you to protect your 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 mates, your clan mates, your Tenno, whatever you want to call it. So I'm interested in trying this one out. This one's uh, for those that are not of the weak-minded, if you will. That is a pretty decent one to possibly play around with. Okay, so let's go Enduring Affliction. We'll go all the way up here. This is a channeling mod. 150% status duration on hit. Holy shit. I have some great ideas for this. A plus 100%, 150% status duration on a hit. Holy crap. Enduring Affliction, Grenier Guardsman is what that bad boy uh, drops from. Uh, of course, transmutable. I have some really, really good ideas on this one. So I'm going to play around with these a little bit. And, uh, you know, I'll give you my feedback as I've played around with them. I mean, don't expect me to suddenly come out with, you know, all these as a feedback tonight type of thing. But... Uh, I got to play around with them. You guys know me. I, I like to play around with the mods. I love my melee. I know other people out there, they hate melee with a passion. They think it's the worst thing in game. But um, 
And some people think that, you know, the best things are primary. Some people think the best things are secondaries. It is all what it is. I love the melee. And I think these new melee mods, I think the status melee mods are going to be awesome. Now, with that said, let's get out of this. Let's get into some gameplay. Let's talk about the rest of this update that I think is pretty cool and important. Hopefully, you're still listening. So let's get busy on that. All right, then. So let's just talk about some of the changes. Not everything, because there's a lot that actually happened in Update 92 here. Um, of course, everything will be posted over the NOG community forums, as always. And, uh, yeah. So some of the changes. Interestingly, the changes, I guess you will. So now Lua is available in sortie missions. So that's more places that we can go. We can go to the Kuva Fortress now. We can go Lua now, along with everything else. So that's pretty cool. So the missions will get a little bit more... Uh, expanded and are not the same exact things all the time. Uh, a couple of the big things, the uh, SATA Prime Operator Suit that is part of the Prime Access has been visually changed concerning some feedback on the original design. Uh, so that is there. I don't have it. I don't really plan on purchasing the Prime Accessory Pack. Matter of fact, uh, for anyone that's wondering, I got a 75% off coupon the other night, and I just, I was like, yeah, you know what? Forget the Prime Accessory Pack. I'm going with the coupon. I, I can use the extra Platinum to purchase things, to do giveaways on things if I want to give away something in-game or something, you know. Uh, it is the holiday season, um, so you never know. And I've got a whole bunch more Platinum sitting in there. You never know what I'm going to do in-game. And in regards to that... So in preparation for their upcoming holiday stuff, for the Christmas stuff that's coming, they've increased the number of gifts that you can send with the two-factor uh, authentication enabled. Uh, you must also be a Master of Rank 2 to s or higher to send gifts. So now there's a couple things to that. So the higher your Master of Rank, the more gifts that you can send, similar to you would in your max trades per day. However, if you don't have the 2FA enabled, the minimum requirement to send gifts is going to be Mastery Rank 8. So for me, that doesn't matter. I'm Mastery Rank 22. Uh, but you will be able to gift more things now with the holidays. So that coupon that I got was the perfect timing. Um, anyway, so you can either go and choose to get the 2FA enabled, or you can be Mastery Rank 8 or higher, which is which either way works. It's, it's entirely up to you. Uh, a couple other things that are now going on here. Casting speed mods, like Natural Talent, will now affect Loki's Decoy, Chroma's Vexed Armor, Saren's Spores and Toxic Lash, Excalibur's Radio Blind, Ivara's, Ivara's Artemis Bow uh, while ziplining, and Navigator while ziplining, Quivel, Quiver and Prowl, I cannot speak, sorry, Inaro Scarab Swarm, Oberon Smite, yay! Um, Ashes Smoke Screen, Equinox's Metamorphos are now affected by the casting speed mod of Natural Talent, which is really, really kind of cool. Uh, okay, so now you can also skip uh, both mission fly-in cinematics by skipping the first one. So previously, this went live and resulted in loading into an Arcwing mission with no Arcwing, uh, so they've kind of fixed that. Uh, they've made numerous performance improvements to the Kuva Fortress tile set. I've got a lot more to talk about in terms of that. Uh, the Halls of Ascension speed test on Lua is now repeatable in the same mission. So this also fixes uh, puncture AoE weapons from breaking the challenge by destroying the switches. So it is now replay re repeatable within the actual mission itself. Uh, they tweaked some sounds of Limbo's abilities. Adjust to the positioning of uh, for the uh, deadliest spurs to prevent clipping on Mesa. Adjusted the Sugatra positioning to try to prevent uh, the Kazero Prime Sugatra from freaking out when equipped on claw weapons. Uh, they also adjusted the Valus Sugatra Prime to fix floating off claw weapons. Um, in terms of some really interesting, I guess you could say spoiler stuff. The added Kuva Siphon mission that they're calling Kuva Flood. Now, this means that you're going to take on enemies that are level 80 to 100, but 
for taking on levels 80 to 100, you're going to get 2x Kuva. So, if you're not running a resource booster mod, you'll average roughly 600 Kuva a run. If you're running a resource booster mod, you're averaging about 1,200 a run. So now with a Kuva Flood mission, if you run this, you will average 2,400, give or take, a run. That's incredible. Now remember, the thing is you can burn through Kuva real quick with the Riven mods. I mean, you can burn through them real quick just trying to play with those Rivens over and over and over until you get what you like or get close enough to what you like. So... I mean, it's a grind uh, still, even when you're getting that kind, but it's nice you're you're able to get it fairly quick, and uh, this one now will be a challenge, so so there's that. I mean, that's that's good. Also, in terms of changes, this is uh, something else that is also well, well and yummy and dandy, is that you can no longer join a mission um, that has had the siphon completed. So... This kind of basically alleviates somebody joining and be like, hey, did you guys get the siphon already? You don't have to ask that question anymore because you can no longer join a mission that has already had the siphon completed. Uh, operators are no longer affected by energy reduction modifiers inside of sorties. They actually removed the secondary flashlight from the twin Roga, disabled the end mission screen uh, after completing the War Within quest because it just didn't need to be there. Uh, and the Queen will now continually attempt to blast players away if they're able to get inside her shield area in the War Within quest. So that's interesting. That kind of makes it a little bit more tougher. Now there's a whole bunch of other fixes and stuff. I'm not going to really get into that uh, since we discussed these mods here first. And I just wanted to cover some of these other changes. I think some of these changes are really, really good. So I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, comments, questions below, uh, as always. And uh, if anyone's still paying attention, like I said, I've got a few things, uh, videos coming up that are definite. I'm going to talk a bit more about Riven mods. Uh, if you haven't seen my little playing around with the, the Riven reroll on the other night, I, I was having fun with it. So uh, I'm hoping you guys enjoy it uh, if you haven't seen it, the videos in there. Uh, otherwise, I've got some discussions on the Riven mods I want to come up with here uh, this weekend. We'll talk about and I will have a full like breakdown, review, thoughts, impressions, whatever, on the war within itself. Uh, the strong points, the bad points, the good points, you know, all that in between uh, where I'm at on a personal level with the uh, the quest and whatnot. So stay tuned for those as a definite. We've got Baroka here tomorrow as well. Uh, it's the weekend, so... And I've got a whole bunch of other stuff I still got to get out and squeeze in there too. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I will catch you guys soon.